What's up everyone? Welcome to Cooking with Jib. I'm your boy Jib. So today we got a fun uh, new thing that I'm trying now. I've been suggested that I should try and put my face in the video more. So we got some audio stuff set up and um, hopefully this turns out good. Hope you guys are enjoying the new setup away from the counter. I'm trying to use the island a little bit more. So, But more about today's video, we're making a carrot bisque, uh, primarily with curry, a little bit of brown sugar for sweetness in there, and I'm probably going to thicken it with a roux, which is what I'm working right here. So if you guys don't know what a roux is, uh, it's 50-50 butter and flour, and you're just cooking it over a low heat. You can get really light um, light roux, or like a raw roux, like a bourmonier, or um, you can just make them really, really dark. I'm going for a little bit of a darker color, nice, nice golden color, if you would. Um, that's probably gonna be best for this carrot bisque, so if I can stop saying um, we might be able to get started with this video. So first things first, I'm going to roast a red pepper. Now, if you guys don't have a grill or anything like that, the next easiest way to do this is turn a nice hot flame on your range and just go ahead and uh, pop the pepper right there. We'll kind of adjust the flame for the size of the pepper. While we got that going on, uh, we're gonna start peeling our carrots. So as you guys can see, we're getting a nice char all the way around the pepper. I'm still kind of missing the middle, but that's because the flame on the burner. So we'll just make sure we keep moving the pepper to uh, adjust for then. Uh, next thing, after we peeled these and we're constantly rotating our pepper, is our onion. Now, we only need half of an onion. I use sweet onions. White onions will work just as well. And then we we'll just need, I don't know, just a, a julienne on it, pretty much. So while I was doing this, I seen that my pepper was done. Let's go ahead and give it a little look-see. So we got this nice char all the way around. And that's what you're looking for. So I got a ball. I got some saran wrap. So all, it, all this purpose is, is one, cooling down the pepper, and then two, making it a little easier to peel and tear apart. Since the pepper's already roasted, the last vegetable that we really have to worry, worry about are the garlic cloves. Uh, I just crack these open, and it's the same thing with the onions. You don't really have to mince them, um, but you do want to break them down. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a nice right, rough slice. So the peppers are sitting in the fridge. That's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes to cool down so we can then peel the skin off of it. I went ahead and threw the onions and garlic and two tablespoons of canola oil in here. Uh, you kind of can't see it because of the sun, but if you can hear that, they're in there. And the last thing that we need to do is go ahead and shred our carrots. So let's see if we can uh, move everything on over. So now that we got all the veggies in there, the sun's gone a little bit. Maybe you guys can see it better. Hope that's not too bright for everyone. We're gonna give that a good stir. My roux came out just how I wanted it to. Let's get a little close up in there. Sorry, I keep forgetting the mics back there. So that's gonna play an important part in a minute. We're just gonna grab the spoon that had the roux on it. And we're going to go ahead and give everything a good mix. So in addition to the two tablespoons worth of canola oil I have in there, we also have a little bit of butter. So we're going to take roughly a tablespoon. Let's just start with a tablespoon. Let's, uh, it's a new year. Let's try to be a little bit more health conscious. So we're just going to slowly bring it up to heat, try to let everything kind of render out on its own. Then we'll step up the heat, actually give everything a saute, try to get a little bit of a sear, and then we will bloom our uh, curry spice since it has a little, it has some seasonings that need to bloom. And if you guys don't know what uh, blooming means, it just means that you need to release more of the oils and release more of the fragrant notes of a spice. Uh, like paprika is one of them, which this curry mix has a lot of paprika in. So you want to bloom it, that way you get, you're getting the best flavor and the best smell. 
Alrighty guys, so hopefully you've taken the liberty to kind of clean up your workstation a little bit. You know, a little bit of cleaning goes a long way, especially when cooking at home. I know for me, there's nothing worse than doing uh, three or four of these videos back to back to back and not cleaning up in between them and then just realizing I completely destroyed my kitchen. I've done four, five different um, sink fulls of dishes just so I could do the next video than trying to clean up and it's a mess so hopefully you guys taken that liberty i brewed a nice little cup of coffee because i got up at like noon and i've been up for maybe an hour and a half so so yeah we're starting the next part of the video so what we're gonna need for that is our cinnamon and curry spice our brown sugar two cups of chicken stock two cups of water a nice mixing bowl a whisk a ladle heavy cream, and then salt and black pepper to taste. So I'm turning up the heat on the veggies right now. The carrots have released a lot of their moisture. This is when we're going to bloom our spices and then we will shortly after add our brown sugar. So just always keep an eye out. You're going to be able to smell all the spices. Generally when they seem very, very intense, that's a good indication to take it all away from the heat and start the glazing process. Now it smells good, it smells like cinnamon and curry. So we're about a minute in, this soaked up a lot, and two tablespoons is a fairly decent amount for the amount of veggies. So we're gonna go ahead and add our brown sugar. So we added our stock, we added our water. We're still on a high heat, we're just giving everything a nice mix. Trying to loosen up some of those powder clumps that might have still been in there. This is a very, very sweet soup, which is why we're adding a roasted red pepper to this. You can still see where the skin is attached right here, but where it's roasted, you just wipe it right off. And hopefully by wrapping it, you're going to help some of that skin, but you can easily tell right here where it didn't get a good enough roast where that skin is still attached and I have to like kind of scratch at it. This is where using a spoon is going to come in handy. So I'm going to clean this real quick and then we will go ahead and set this pepper aside to then work into our soup. So everything in the pot right now is coming, just coming to a boil. So we're going to cut the heat that exactly what we want. And now we are going to add our one half cup of heavy cream. We're going to turn it back on a heat. Just a very low heat and we'll start setting ourselves up for the whole back and forth back and forth if you guys have made bisque you know what I'm talking about if not this is called tempering you are tempering a roux into a bisque you're tempering tempering I can't talk Ooh. so as you guys can see Lots of steam coming off of this. We got it back up to that boiling point, but not quite to it, which is exactly what we want. Now, I got my little mixer right here, and now we're just going to uh, blend everything together so it makes it nice and creamy. If I can work it. Ooh, this is hot. You can go ahead and use a blender if you have a blender. Just mind you that the smaller bits of carrot might be a little bit harder to incorporate into a nice smooth bisque. So we got something close to what I wanted, but now this is the part where I'm going to add my bell peppers. I gotta fix the camera. Oh, we'll just leave the camera. It's fine. You can still see my ugly face. So while I was charging the camera, <clears throat> I brought the soup up to a boil. So this is the point where we do really want to boil our uh, bisque. And then now we're just going to kind of keep it. We're going to keep it warm because we're going to be transferring things back and forth, back and forth. To begin, we want to get a couple of ladlefuls of the bisque. So since we don't have a lot, you maybe just want to get a couple scoops, maybe about a quarter of the soup. Like I said, this is a small amount. So you're not gonna need a lot of roux. This is a half pound or a pound roux all together, a half pound of flour, half pound of butter. Mix in about two tablespoons worth. 
Not a lot. And the whole process of doing this a little bit at a time is so that we are slowly thickening, which we're going to constantly have to keep the soup, uh, we're gonna have to constantly bring the soup back to a boil to see the actual thickness. But this way we're ensuring that there's no flour clumps in our bisque, which is a no-no, especially when you're in a restaurant. Now, at home, it might not be a big of an issue to you. It's not too big of an issue for me, but I just want to help guide you uh, in the right direction. So, and the last thing that we need is a rubber spatula. Thankfully, my girlfriend has like three of these, so I got the nice pretty pink one. And we're gonna mix it back into the bisque. Let it come up to temp just real quick. So wait a, wait a few seconds, about 10, 15 seconds. Incorporate it very, very well. We'll, we'll give it some time, and then we're just going to repeat the process over and over again until we get our desired thickness. Now, mind you, when you get about half of the roux in, you're gonna wanna bring it to a very hard boil and then let it sit for a minute. That's when you're gonna know if you actually have uh, your, your, the thickness that you want. It's a little misleading if you don't boil your bisque, if you don't bring it all the way up, because with the cream and with the flour, you have to give it time to incorporate better. Another thing to remember is that this is not a like tomato bisque or a lobster or crab bisque. It's not a predominantly stock based. You have a lot of vegetables in there, which is going to add a lot of thickness. So this might be just enough. So as I said before, I'm incorporating everything very well. We're gonna bring it up to a boil, but I can already tell you uh, just from the thickness of it, this is exactly where I want. Now, if you guys do go over, you make it a little thick, always adding milk, heavy cream, or just a little bit more stock or water will help get you where you want. Mind you, you always wanna bring it to a boil again after that, make sure that it is the correct thickness, but I think we have it for what I want. So all in all, I think I added about five, maybe six tablespoons of the roux, which like I said, is about half of what I had in the pan. We're gonna cut the heat, but as you can tell, it is a uh, bubbling, which those are all the characteristics, whoo, sorry guys, all the characteristics of a thick bisque. Oh yeah, you guys like my, uh, my extremely long extension cord for my emulsion blender? Yeah. That's how we do things here. As always, salt and pepper to taste. You can do it per person. You know, just put salt and pepper out on a table. It needs a little bit more salt. Now, mind you, with the, the curry, the cinnamon, all the vegetables that are in there, they all have their natural sweetnesses, and then we added brown sugar. So, you get a little bit of the spice, a little bit of savory from the curry, which is what I wanted. But I wanted a predominantly sweet bisque. And a little bit more salt. It just, you know, it's all to taste. I think adding a nice amount of salt to it helps just bring out a lot of those subtle notes to it. And then it hits that aspect on your tongue, you know, that salty, savory flavor or salty and sweet. It just, it's a good bisque. At work, I just made a version of this with butternut squash. It works awesome. You shave some salami on there or you uh, get some salami shave it and fry it and that's a really good garnish so i think that is it everyone i hope you enjoyed the new setup i hope this is conveying my voice well and uh, maybe this is just how i do videos from here on out so with that guys as always thank you for watching i greatly appreciate all the support uh my channel is slowly growing and it's just awesome if you guys didn't see my other series, The Brutiful Boys, I did with my buddy Matt, click up here now, or I might have did that in the video earlier, but click it up now, or click up here now to go check that out. It's fun. It's not as serious as this. It's a lot more broke down. Two guys drinking beer at like four in the morning. So uh, if you guys want me to cook anything, leave a comment down below. If you guys have questions, leave a comment down below. Like, comment, and share as always, guys. I always appreciate that and the support that you guys have given me so far. So, with that, everyone, I'm Jib. Remember, kissing don't last, cooking do. Peace. I made some soup if you want some soup.
it's tasty and it's not that fattening because it's all veggies I mean besides the heavy cream and then the butter and then the flour it could be worse for you okay